Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I'm going to review a very interesting printer from Sovel, the SV06. This printer is a Prusa MK3S Plus clone, but costs around one-third of or one-fourth of the Prusa's price. The MSRP is $299, but when it's on sale, it's always selling at around $250 or even less. Let's take a look at what hardware we can expect from this machine. For the motion system, it uses linear rods on the X, Y, and Z axis. It uses Sovel's new planetary direct drive extruder and an all-metal hot end that can print up to 300 degrees Celsius. It comes with an inductive sensor for auto bed leveling as well. Instead of a color touchscreen, it uses a classic LCD screen. The print surface is a textured PEI spring steel sheet, and there are no leveling knobs under the bed, so it just lets the bed leveling sensor do its job. The parts you see on a Prusa that are 3D printed are all made by injection molding on this printer, and there are also belt tensioners on both the X and Y axis. It uses a ribbon cable and has integrated all of the cables on the print head, and for the motherboard, it uses a 32-bit board with silent stepper drivers. So for this price, the hardware looks really good to me. I would like to thank Sovel for sending me this machine to review, and with that, let's get started. We have the base, the print head, the LCD screen, the filament holder, the electronic enclosure, the power supply, the gantry, a power cord, and some tools. First, put the gantry on the base and secure them from the side using two M5 by 50 screws on each side. Then, fix the screen on the right side of the frame and connect the ribbon cable to the EXP3 connector of the screen. Secure the power supply using two M4 by 20 screws at the back of the gantry. Then, mount the print head of the X carriage plate using three M3 by 5 screws. Snap the electronic enclosure onto the back left of the gantry. Mount the filament holder at the top using two M5 by 10 screws. Connect the ribbon cable to the hot end, followed by the power supply and the stepper motor cables. Flip the switch on the power supply to your local voltage, and we can now turn on the printer. We will start by using the Z-Align feature to make sure the gantry is level. It's going to move all the way up and use sensorless homing to detect the physical limit of how high this gantry can go. And when both sides bump into the top, it assumes they are synchronized. Next, I will do a round of auto bed leveling. And then set the Z offset. After that, I will preheat the printer and feed in some filament. Using the knob to feed filament is quite handy. It also turns pretty smoothly. I will then insert the microSD card and start with the sample 3D Benchy G code. It seems this benchy is not sliced very well, as there are some broken lines on the surface, but the cooling and overhanging are both fine. The bottom is printed with a small brim, and the print took 1 hour and 42 minutes, which is about 10 minutes faster than the Ender 3 standard 50 mm per second speed with 500 mm per second squared acceleration. I will reslice this benchy with my own slicer. The only thing you need to pay attention to is the retraction speed and settings. Since this is the first time I'm using this extruder, I just refer to the user manual. As this is a Prusa clone, I will use the Prusa slicer and detach the Prusa MK3S Plus profile, and change the retraction settings according to the manual. 
save this profile as the SV06. I also need to change the print volume. The maximum Z height should be 250, and the print bed is 220 by 220. For the starting G code, I will remove G80 since Prusa uses G80 for bed leveling. I will just keep the rest and slice a 3D Benchy. Use the default print profile and export the G code. The print finished in 1 hour and 20 minutes, and it saved another 22 minutes compared to the G-code on the SD card. The print quality is awesome, especially compared to the previous one. There are no more broken lines on the surface, and the back also looks much better. In fact, the print profiles of the original Prusa MK3S Plus and the Silval SV06 are the same, except for the retraction settings, the print volume, and the starting G-code. Next, I will print a calibration cube with the exact same print profile. The X and Y surface look okay, the Z is a little bit rough, but the dimensions are also within an acceptable range. Then, I will use voxel PLA to print a deer. The print finished without using any support. The deer's horns are not perfect, and there is some string, but the overhanging is not bad. Up next, I will try some different materials starting with PETG. I will print a spoon and see how it looks. It looks pretty nice, and there are no issues at all. I have no complaints about this PTG spoon. Next, I will try to print ABS, but as ABS is toxic, I will use the Comgross smoke purifier as an air filter. First, I tried to print without using glue to see if this bed can stick to ABS. Unfortunately, in the middle of the print, it didn't stick, and the print failed. So. I applied some glue and printed this model again. This tripod phone holder printed successfully this time with no warping. The bottom also looks nice, and it fits well with the other parts I printed with other printers. Then I will try a harder material. I will use polycarbonate to print this cable roller. In the middle of the print, the cover warped, but it seems it won't affect the rest of the print, so I will just let it finish. I just bent the part and tried to make it return to its original shape. The result is okay. They fit together nicely, and I can turn them without any problems. Since this printer didn't come with any hardened steel nozzles, I will still use the brass nozzle to print some nylon carbon fiber, as just printing a small tweezer shouldn't ruin the nozzle. It turns out perfect. The tweezers are both rigid and functional. Finally, I will print some TPU. 
I'm sure this extruder can handle this Airy 1 TPU pretty well, as this is the easiest to print TPU. Even a stock Ender 3 can print it without problems if you print it slightly slower. So, I will print at a normal speed of 60 millimeters per second. The result is pretty good, with no issues at all, and just a tiny bit of string in between the parts, which is normal when printing multiple TPU models at the same time. Let's talk about the pros and cons of this printer, starting with the pros. 1. This is a Prusa clone, or I should say it's based on the open source Prusa machine with some modifications, so the overall design of this printer is just as reasonable as the Prusa. 2. Sovo replaced all the 3D printed parts on the Prusa. If you prefer parts made by injection molding, this part is better than the Prusa. 3. The assembly is easy. Just put the gantry on the base and install the print head, LCD screen, power supply, electronic enclosure, and filament holder. The whole process should take around 15 minutes. 4. The print quality is very good. I just used the Prusa slicer and slightly modified the Prusa MK3S Plus profile by changing the print volume, retraction settings, and the starting and ending G-code, and it works just fine. 5. The all-metal hot end and the new low gear ratio extruder can print a broad range of filament. I've tested PLA, PETG, ABS, and TPU, as well as engineering grade materials like nylon carbon fiber and polycarbonate. I haven't seen it print any worse than other printers that cost more. As the gear ratio of the extruder is 6.5 to 1, it can use a lightweight pancake stubber motor on the print head and still work pretty well. 6. It uses sensorless homing, so there will be no limit switches on any of the axes, so you can max out the print volume as the TMC2209 stepper drivers are using stall guard to detect a physical limit. 7. There is no more manual bed leveling, as they followed Prusa in removing the leveling knobs under the bed. By just using the inductive sensor for auto bed leveling, the idea is good, but some adjustments are required, and I will talk more about this in the cons section. 8. The default acceleration in the firmware is set to 1000 mm per second squared, which is two times faster than a standard budget printer like the Ender 3 series, and the result is great. It prints faster, and the quality is also really good. Now for the cons. 1. At first, I had some issues with filament feeding. This extruder is pretty likely to misfeed the filament and let it roll inside the gear, but when I straighten the first few inches of the filament manually before feeding, it works fine. 2. The workflow of the Z-Line feature can also be improved. It should be combined with the auto bed leveling and be called Z-Calibration. Since after you let the Z-axis hit the top for alignment, the mesh data from the auto bed leveling sensor is no longer accurate. It would be better to automatically do another round of auto bed leveling, or at least show a message to remind the user. For now, the order of the menu is auto bed leveling and then Z align. If a user doesn't understand the logic behind this and just follows the order of the menu, there would be a problem. 3. The auto bed leveling and auto Z align are not as good as I expected. After I used the feature to let both Z axes move to the top, when they crashed into the top, the centerless homing will stop them and they are supposed to be now aligned. However, I used a 25mm tall 3D printed block to check both sides, and the right side is obviously taller than the left. It was not just a little bit taller, and the difference may be more than what the bed leveling sensor can compensate for. Even if you do another round of auto bed leveling after the Z align, it still results in an inconsistent first layer. If your print is large, you may see that one side didn't stick well to the bed, but the other side is perfectly fine. The only way to fix this is by manually turning the lead screw and making them as level as possible and doing another round of auto bed leveling. It worked okay, even though it used up the whole print bed. But I think Silvo should find out why the auto bed leveling sensor can't compensate for the difference between the two sides of the gantry after the Z align. Four. When I printed ABS, I tried printing with a 255 degrees Celsius nozzle and a 100 degrees Celsius heated bed, but the printer failed to heat up. As this printer uses a 360 watt power supply, it should be fine. 
since I used Prusa Slicer and a detached Prusa MK3 Plus profile to work with this printer, I then realized that the starting G-code was trying to heat up the bed and the nozzle at the same time, which a real Prusa can do without an issue. So, I tried a lower temperature of a 245 degrees Celsius nozzle and a 100 degrees Celsius heated bed, and it can now heat up both the nozzle and the bed at the same time, and works normally. Then, I tried to print polycarbonate with a 275 degrees Celsius nozzle and a 100 degrees Celsius heated bed. I just changed the starting G-code to heat up the bed first and then the nozzle, just like what Kira would normally do, and it worked. So, if you use Cura or Soval Skin Cura Slicer, you will be fine. However, if you plan to use the Prusa Slicer and use this Prusa clone like a real Prusa, you may need to rearrange your starting G-code to avoid heating both the nozzle and the bed at the same time. These are basically all the issues I have with this printer, but I would like to give two additional suggestions to Soval. 1. The printer still uses a micro SD card. Previously, Solo used Creality's motherboard, which may have limited them to having to stick with what Creality has. But now that they've designed their own motherboard, replacing the micro SD card slot with a USB connector costs nothing, so doing this when designing the new motherboard shouldn't be a problem. 2. It doesn't come with any hardened steel nozzles. When users buy a printer with an all-metal hotend, they probably want to print some engineering-grade materials like nylon carbon fiber, polycarbonate carbon fiber, or other abrasive filament. A hardened steel nozzle costs just a few cents, and so it should come with at least one hardened steel and one brass nozzle, instead of just two brass nozzles. In conclusion, this SV06 is a good Prusa clone. It has some minor issues that I mentioned in the cons section, especially with the Z-Align feature and auto bed leveling, so this part is not done as well as a real Prusa. But in terms of print quality, print speed, and filament compatibility, it is still not bad compared to a Prusa for a fraction of the Prusa's price. For around $250, I can't see any other printer at the same price range that comes with a linear rod motion system, a dual Z axis, a 300 degrees Celsius all metal hot end, a low gear ratio direct drive extruder, a 32 bit board with silent stepper drivers on all axes, sensorless homing, auto bad leveling, and all the small details like belt tensioners or a PI spring steel sheet with a stopper at the end for easier alignment and nice ribbon cable management. If you are interested in this printer, I put the link under the description. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. Make sure to press the notification bell to receive new video updates, and I will see you next time.